Okay, let's go ahead and solve this particular question. Now, I have a question. Can this be solved by using the approach that we have already established in the previous segments, namely undetermined coefficients? The answer is no, because I didn't give you, a, you know, the form that corresponds to this. This is a cosecant, right, which is 1 over sec sine. So I can't do it. So you cannot really use that. So you have to use the approach that we are establishing right here, right now. So let's go ahead and uh, do it. You, you remember y is equal to yc plus yp. The first thing is to obtain yc. And in order to yc, I will get y double prime plus 9y is equal to 0. Okay, I would like you to go ahead and write the ancillary form. Pause the video and write it yourself. I want to test something. Okay, so now I'm going to write it. m squared plus 9 is equal to 0. Did you write 9m over here, some of you? I, I see you sometimes see this, okay? It's, in, you know, because that changes the whole tone of the rest of the question. So from here, you will get m squared is equal to minus 9, right? And I get m1, comma 2 will be equal to basically plus 3i and minus 3i, right? So that's what I get. So if I go out and write my yc, when the, in the form it should be c1 cosine of 3x, because remember, this is 0 plus 3i, this is 0 minus 3i, this was alpha, this was beta, right? So e to the power of 0x, which is 1. So I'm taking shortcut now because we have been exposed to this already. C2 times sine of 3x. Um, so what is my y1 then in here? Um, you can see that this is going to be my y1. By the way, it doesn't matter which we call y1 or y2. You know, the final result will be the same because you're summing them up, right? So I'm going to say that y1 is equal to cosine of 3x and I'm going to say y2 is equal to sine of 3x. Again, you can swap them if you choose to. Okay, so far so good. So I have established that yc is already here. Now I have to go one more step and establish the yp. And that is a little bit more involved, but we will now be practicing the approach that we have established. So let's do it, yp. Now yp will be u1x, y1 of x plus u2 of x, y2 of x, okay? So if I write this in a shorter form, u1 cosine of 3x plus u2 sine of 3x, right? And the goal in here is to find u1 and u2. And if I look at my notes, or you can simply memorize this, it's not too bad actually, w1 by w, right? And u2 prime, it will be w2 by w, right? And w is the wrong skin right so let's calculate the wrong scheme but before going there i want to discuss what f of x is so i'm kind of lucky i mean that's not, it's not a huge deal but i don't have anything over here so it's the form that i want it to be in the another question that i you may be confused is what is cosecant cosecant is one over sine right so know these things sine of 3x not cosine second is one over cosine okay then i uh, you know let me proceed so let's first start with the w, okay? So remember that was just me that write it y1, y2, just to establish the process, y2 prime. So if I look at, uh, you know, insert this, so that's going to be cosine 3x, um, y2 was sine 3x, and the derivative of cosine of 3x will be minus 3 sine of 3x, right? And this is going to be 3 cosine of 3x positive, right? So then now I have the determinant of this matrix. Okay, so then it's not uh, 3 cosine square of 3x minus minus becomes plus, right? Plus 3 sine square 3x. Now, uh, you know, I, I get uh, kind of happy immediately because I can take this in three parentheses. I get myself sine square 3x plus cosine square 3x. And I'm sure everybody knows this over here. This is 1. So this w turned out to be 3, number 3. So you can see that this is not too bad so far, okay? But this W1 and W2, it may get quite complicated. We'll find out, right? We'll find out. So let's find W1. Um, like I said, there is a formula for it, right? Minus f of x, y2. But I don't want you to memorize it. I want you to do the way that I do it because sometimes we forget the negative and etc. So, but simply, we established in the previous segment that we are going to take the column, uh, the first column in this particular case, and I'm going to write 0 f of x, and the rest is same as this, right? 
in W2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this the same. I'm going to write 0 f of x. So it's not a big deal, okay? Sine of 3x, and you can see I'm simply copying from here. I'm not, you know, rewriting. 3 cosine of 3x. So if I establish this, you will get yourself. Let's go ahead and write this as well. I need this. Uh, 1 by 4 sine 3x, right? That's what we said. So if I do that, I will get myself minus 1 fourth times sine 3x by sine 3x. So, I mean, I, I can't be more happier than this, right? For this particular uh, u1 term. This is 3, this is 1 fourth. So I'm in a, in a, in a good shape, okay? And I, I hope that this, uh, my luck will continue in the, the second one as well, okay? Let's see what happens. This was cosine, right? The first root. And it was minus 3 sine of 3x was this one, I remember. This was 0, and this is 1 over 4 sine of 3x. So if I do that, let's see. So I'm going to get myself 1 fourth of cosine 3x by sine 3x. So it's not as great, okay? I got a cotangent, but uh, okay, you know, it's got to do. It is what it is, right? So now, okay. The good news is I have established this, this, and this. So now I'll insert that back in and see what happens. Let's do this. U1 prime will be equal to W1 by W. Let's do this. Why don't I do the first one and I let you do the second one, okay? How about that? I just solved the first one and write the final answer. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. That is the hardest one, the second one. Minus one fourth, right, W1. Um, divided by 3. So over here I got myself basically 1 over 12, right? Uh, and then remember this is du1 dx is equal to minus 1 12. So from here you're going to get yourself u1 is equal to minus x by 12, right? You know? Why didn't I put a plus c? Because the equation itself has, uh, you know, when you form the final y term, you will see that there are c terms already in it as well, okay? So I don't have to worry about it. So let's do the second one that I was trying to push on to you. So I don't have to do it, but well, I gotta do it, I guess. 4 times sine 3x divided by 3. So 1 12th of cosine of 3x by sine of 3x, which will be du2 dx. So u2 will be. So now I am hoping that you do see this. I'm going to leave a one minute for you. So obviously 1 12 will be there. There's nothing I can do about it. Times. Um, do you see that this is like one third, but that's, you know, I'll get back to that. But this is natural logarithm, right? Because how it's defined is this and, you know, the derivative of that. You can see the derivative of sine 3x is 3 times cosine of 3x. I only have one of them, so I will have, right? So I will get myself by one third times ln of sine 3x. So you can see over here, I get myself 1 over 36 ln of sine 3x. Uh, I think that's got to do it, right, for u2. I don't think I can proceed any further. So now I know my u1, which is easy. I know my u2. Then I will go back up here, and you will see that this will be the final form that I want this yp in. So let me just write it. So u1 is the cosine of. Let's not confuse. So yp will be minus x by 12 cosine of 3x plus 1 over 36 ln of sine 3x sine 3x right and obviously the y will be yp plus yc and i remember yc was like this cosine 3x plus c2 sine 3x minus x by 12 cosine of 3x plus 1 by 36 ln sine 3x times sine 3x. So you can see that this is the answer to this particular question. As you've seen, there has been some multiple uh, cancellations. So it was a, a, I was able to obtain a fairly manageable uh, function at the end of the day. Thank you for watching the segment. I'll be back with another question to illustrate this uh, approach we are established. Okay, thanks.